Do you remember the days where you could buy a good car for just $500? Well, I don't, but I did consider myself lucky when I was buying this abandoned Mustang GT for just $500. To be completely upfront, I actually bought this car around a year ago, right before the base price of everything for sale on Facebook Marketplace was jacked up to $1,400. If you didn't catch the last video, basically this car sat out in a field and was parked by its owner because it was running rough. I picked it up and eventually got it to start, but it was definitely misfiring. A quick compression test uncovered one of our cylinders having a zero reading and our scope video showed a hung open valve. I bought this car solely as a gamble, and while it would take a substantial amount of work to get it running right again, it seems that this is what most of you guys want to see. Well, then again, maybe not. So don't mind me while I just whip this bent valve right out like it's an air filter, but seriously, it seems like some of the best comments are written in between the most popular ones, especially this one about how the 4.6 liter 4 engine are notorious for popping off rocker arms. I've never heard of anything like this before, but a quick Google search confirms it. If the fix is as simple as popping back in place a rocker arm and regaining compression, well, this would be a miracle. Now, we can't get our hopes up. The valve mark on the piston is still damning enough, but what's the chance that this engine did pop a rocker arm. Well, in just a moment, we'll figure this mystery out, and at the same time, I'll give you a quick update on all my other important projects, including the BMW i8 and Ferrari 360. And while we were filming all these cars along with their issues, I felt my wallet getting a bit lighter, but that's probably because I ditched my old fat wallet for a Ridge wallet. The Ridge wallet is a sleek, minimalist wallet made out of tough materials like steel, titanium, and this sweet raw carbon fiber one that I have here. It's tough and has replaceable hardware, so it's the last wallet you'll ever need. If you want to upgrade your fat wallet to the Ridge wallet, head on over to ridge.com slash samcrack, or just click the link in the description box. And while you're there, make sure you use code samcrack at checkout. That's going to get you 10% off your entire order. Of course, I got to give a huge thanks Ridge for lightening my load and for sponsoring this video. I can't even believe it. I can't. There it is. <laughs> I can't believe what I'm looking at here. Let me get the camera and bring it closer. You see what's wrong? Just by a first glance there, I'll give you a little look around the head. Look at this. The rocker arm popped off. Right here, right here, right here. And then look, if we go underneath, I just slip you right in. Can you see it sitting there? <laughs> there it is. Let me see if I can get it out without dropping it. Look at this. Now, in a couple cases, people reported damaged rocker arms. I don't see anything out of the ordinary. This just looks nice and used. The roller's all clean and everything. I think we should be able to pop this back on right now. All right, so now that the top of the cam lobe is facing upward, you can see I've got the rocker arm set in place on the underside. Now we just need to kind of pull it in using a flathead screwdriver and snap it into place. There it is. Is it on? All right, you can see it's uh, back in place. I'm gonna spin it over by hand first and just make sure it kind of stays, does what it needs to do. And we're gonna do a compression test again and see if it brings back the compression. All right, this is exciting. Come on, compression. Ah. Should be enough to give us a reading, let's see. You know, the crank wasn't all that strong. Ah, zero, zero. Yeah, it's all hooked up nicely too. We almost got super lucky in this. Could you imagine if we restore compression by just popping that rocker arm back on? I threw the valve cover back in place just so no debris gets in there, but I just want to show you quickly what it will entail to actually fix this car because a lot of people uh, in the comments are talking about, hey, throw a valve at it. I said, throw a cylinder head at it. But basically in order to do this repair, the whole top of this engine has to come off. So the alternator, you're going to take off the thermostat housing here, uh, all this intake stuff and the intake manifold itself. Then on the front side, there's a couple pulleys that are going to bolt off and you're going to take off any of these things in the way. So the battery, all these reservoirs, the brake booster and everything, a lot of disassembly here. Then the front timing cover has to come off. Literally, you have to disassemble like half this engine in order to then be able to unbolt the cylinder head. I'm not sure how this car goes, but you likely just keep the exhaust manifold bolted in place and then disassemble it from underneath the car where it mates the exhaust. And then again, you're going to be able to pull the cylinder head off 
and either replace it with uh, your used cylinder head or as some people have suggested, just throw a new valve in this one. And that was one of the most popular suggestions in the comment section from the last video. And that was, what are you talking about all this extra cylinder head stuff? Just throw a valve in. And to me, it doesn't make a whole lot of sense because in the case that we have a damaged valve, which we clearly do, uh, when they come back up, they can mess up the seat where the valve sits and it needs to sit perfectly in there. Otherwise, again, it's going to allow that compression to escape like we've got right now. A machine shop can go and cut a new valve seat, make sure everything is pressure tested and working properly. It's something I can't really do in house. So uh, the idea still stands that I would either replace the cylinder head, but the more I think about it, this car would be better off if I just bought an entire replacement engine. I'm not talking about just a short block, buy an engine assembly. I'm sure a junkyard would sell you one. And in all, it would probably cost another five, $600 more than just doing the cylinder head, but it's a minimal amount more work and while an engine is sitting out of the car, you can do things like refurbish the timing system and whatnot. But my major issue with this Mustang is that whatever route we go, say that we get it running just perfectly, right? then the paint still looks like this so then i'd want to throw a cheap paint job at it probably retain the same color that's going to be 500 or a thousand bucks at a cheap paint shop and then well if you look at the brake rotors they're all rusty so we'll throw new brakes at it and when i was moving this thing on and off the trailer over here uh well it's a bit mushy because the suspension is original it has 200,000 miles so we throw a whole new suspension on it do you see where i'm going with this this 500 hundred dollar car could easily turn into a five thousand dollar car by the time it's done even in a budget-minded way i still stand by the fact that it is a good project car at 500 the more work i diy the cheaper it's going to end up being but at the end of the day i've got a lot more interesting cars at least to me that i want to work on specifically the bmw i8 which i'm going to show you in just a minute but there's even a couple more i haven't shown you before i'm really excited to get to and I'd rather just spend the money on those. Now the next car I wanna give you a quick update on is easily one of my favorites, uh, but it's been a bit problematic as of late. No, I'm not talking surprisingly about the TT 3.2. Once we finished this car's repairs, I drove it for about a month and it's been tremendous. It's a lot of fun to drive. I'm talking about the BMW 335. Now, first and foremost, I love this car so much because of its story. This car was given to me by a very generous viewer by the name of Scott Bennett. And when he gave this car to me, he said, this car is your problem. <laughs> you signed up for it, it's now your problem. And he wasn't kidding. When we were installing the aftermarket exhaust, the studs that hold the pipes together were all rotten. So he went and used an air hammer to knock them out. When we did that, well, it killed the O2 sensors, all four of them. There's two pre-cat, two post-cat. I bought all four of them. But then the next thing that proved to be a problem is the fact that this car is an X drive. X drive means all wheel drive in the world of BMWs. And that means that there's a huge front cradle and a drive shaft, something that's not on the more common rear wheel drive 335s. When I got underneath the car to install the new O2 sensors, it became to me very clear there's no way I was going to get to them without dropping the front cradle. I called a few places and they said on the X drive, you really kind of have to hang the engine down low in order to get to the O2 sensors. So I did a little research and I devised a new plan. I ordered a set of catless downpipes specifically for an X drive car. They're very common. They're only a couple hundred dollars and we're gonna gain a few more horsepower once they're installed. And I decided we just cut through the catalytic converters. Just so happened when I got this car off the ground, my buddy VTune was in town and he helped me out with it. We cut these catalytic converters out of place and before you go crazy and say, man, you're damaging this car. Let me show you the inside of the catalytic converter. There was nothing left in them. Ben, you made that way easier. Yeah, I usually make... cut catalytic converters off of new cars at the dealerships. <laughs> so you made it look way easier than it was. Look how it's empty. <laughs> There's nothing even in there. Look at these cats. No wonder this thing smells. We basically were catless already. Yep. <laughs> when we cut them out, it gave us a ton of room to be able to access what was left of the catalytic converter pipes and gain access to the O2 sensors. We were going to kill two birds with one stone, increase the performance of the 335, and get in the fresh O2 sensors so the car would stop throwing that check engine light and it would actually boost. But we ran into one more roadblock. The hood on this car is jammed, and according to the internet, this is a very 
common issue. People go about this in one of a couple ways. The first one is they go in through the fender liner here, reach up, and then the hood cable is located here and you just kind of tug on it. We did that for a couple hours. And then the last resort, which is the most difficult, is if you kind of go in right here, the latch is located somewhere in here done it on both sides and I just can't seem to pop this latch. After spending so many hours at this, I'm at the point where I literally want to cut a notch in the hood just to be able to pop the hood open. We'll fix or replace the latches so this doesn't happen again, at least for not a very long time. Um, but I hate to cut a perfectly good hood. The nice thing is that there's plenty of these and I know you guys will go crazy ballistic. We cut a hood in one other video and it was a destroyed hood on an accident car and everybody just killed us in the comment section. But I'm telling you, I'm stuck here. So if you guys have any suggestions on how I can pop the passenger side latch on my 335, let me know. That's the only way we can get in, plug in the O2 sensors. And once we do this car again, it should be fixed at least for another few thousand miles. And it is a tremendous car to have in the driveway. To me, it drives like a fun sports car. And every time I drive, it makes me think of Scott and the great time I had whenever I picked it up from him uh, in Michigan. So I'd like to get this one back on the road. Let me know your suggestions on how to pop this darn hood down there. Now the last car out in the field is quite possibly my most important one. And it's been bulletproof until now. This is a 2014 Ford F-250 Super Duty with the gas 6.2 liter engine. This is known to be one of Ford's most recent reliable engines. And the engine is not what is giving me trouble. Just a few days ago, I got in a cabin, turned the car on, and it reeked of gasoline. I did it a few more times, and then I looked from this side of the truck. Let me show you what I found. Now here's the fuel tank. It spans very long. It's 35 gallons, and look right here. Something smashed up into this fuel tank and dented it to the point where I think maybe the, the top hat, the fuel pump hat, is cracked and it's just spurting out gasoline as you start it. So clearly with that issue, I can't drive it. This is something that needs to be fixed. I do rely on this truck. And as much as I always tell myself, I wanna get a new truck, truck prices right now are so expensive and this one has under 70,000 miles. It's been so good to me. So. I'm gonna buy the parts, I'm gonna fix it. To me, this is kind of a generic, boring repair, but I have no clue what we're gonna find once we drop the fuel tank. So let me know down in the comments again, is this a repair that you would like to see on the channel? Even though it's my most stubborn, it's the one I'm most excited about, the Ferrari 360 that looks, uh, well, not much different from the last video I showed it to you. And if you didn't see that video, it's actually the first one that Stepmom made an appearance in. You can check it out right up here. But I removed the entire transmission out of the car because of one, small $20 leaky rear main seal. Now I've got the replacement part there, but more importantly, our clutch was oil soaked. Everything was a mess. I just got a Kevlar clutch delivered from GTE Engineering, and then I got all the other parts from uh, Great Britain. We're gonna do a new throw out bearing. Uh, every single part that needs to be refurbished when it comes to the transmission and the engine is getting done. And that's pretty much it for this car. But once we get this all done, it's gonna have brand new oil and I'm gonna do a cool and flush. And then if you remember, Scott Radarosa and I did all new oil seals uh, when we did cam belt change. Again, it's got new cam belts or timing belts. This car will be pretty much completely refurbished once the transmission is back in place. We're gonna replace this guy right here. This is the transmission mount bushing. Uh, these are known to be problematic, although this one feels really good. They're only 50 bucks. While the transmission's out of the car, will make things really easy. And once this goes back in place, which is actually like the easy part, we gotta get the F1 all sorted. The F1 uh, system lives up here. I took it out along with the transmission. And that's because, well, this whole entire system is under pressure. The second you let a line out, it's like dealing with brakes if the fluid is not there and there's air in the lines well our car will not shift so we have to do a relearn process we also have to do a calibration once the transmission is in but once it is in pretty much every part of the drivetrain of my 360 will have been refurbished you can see all the other parts laying over there and then this car should work and fingers crossed it doesn't give us any issues give me like one or two thousand miles ferrari a lot of you guys are betting against me on this one i wouldn't if i were you it is legitimately 
almost done, but also speaking about another supercar, one that I'm really excited about. That is almost done. Let's hop on over to Zach's place, aka the Ultimate Rebuilds Garage. I'm going to show you the progress we're making on the BMW i8 respray. The fan is running back there, which means the BMW i8 is currently getting repainted. Well, all the body parts are. Uh, we pulled them off, stuck them in there, and I picked a really wild color. I love it. It's a little bit more subtle than the Lamborghini. And uh, well, if you follow me on Instagram right here, you would have already known which color uh, I was thinking of. I put up a poll asking you guys which color you wanted, and I picked uh, the exact opposite of the one you guys told me to. But again, I think you're gonna like it, and I think it's quite different than all the other i8s out on the road, and that is what I was going for. Now, the one car I left out of the last garage update I did probably over a year ago was this one right here. I'll pull off the car cover and show you what's been hiding in the middle of Zach's landscaping here. This looks better off as yard art in Zach's garden than uh, I think it would in my garage. Zach, if you want to keep this as yard art, you're more than welcome to, man. I think it looks good. I think my family really appreciates it. <laughs> so, the big issue is this, Zach, come over here, because I got to ask you, um, he gave me a partial list. It was just a partial list of yeah. stuff. Everything needs to be gone over in this car. The paint body's in good shape, but really to make it right, what do we need? Basically a whole new interior. <laughs> yeah. It, seat covers, new dash, new headliner, new sunroof. It needs, it needs a lot in the interior. So you can get some recreation parts. Some of them you'd have to have custom made and the custom made stuff is where it starts to get ungodly expensive. I don't love I, I the love, car. Well, I have well a, you love it? I you, love Volkswagen Beetles. So I'll make you a it deal right now. Like one. How about like give me one and a half of those jet skis over there and then you could keep. I don't know if it's worth that right now. Oh, well, thanks. Thanks, Zach. <laughs> I can't wait to see what the i8's gonna look like all put back together and polished. The color that we chose has a pearl in it that really pops in the sun. And of course, there's a bunch of black accents. So the kind of two tone look, again, with the unique color, I think it's gonna be a real showstopper. Now, I did wanna give you guys a quick update. Some of you have been asking. I said in a prior video when I hit 1.1 million subscribers, which we just did, that I would go and collaborate with my stepmother and I would help fix her Crown Victoria, which is currently broken. She was quoted from a local repair shop $1,000 to fix what I think is like a $20 part. We're gonna see if that's the case. I'm actually headed there like in a few hours. So I'm gonna hit the road, I'm gonna go there, see if I can't knock out this Crown Victoria. Fingers crossed, you guys know I couldn't finish one 4.6 Ford, so let's hope that uh, this one is a little bit of a simpler issue uh, and I'll be bringing you that video probably right after this one. For those of you that made it this far into the video, I've got something a little special for you. The car that I'm sitting in right now, I've never shown on YouTube, I've never shared it on any one of my social media platforms and it's actually something that I think is going to be really exciting for all of us because this is a car that one of you is going to have the opportunity to go home with and it's going to benefit a great charity. It just has a great story all around it. Uh, let me get out of the car and show it to you. Now when you get a first glance at it, you're going to be like, well, what's so special about that car? And uh, well, the truth is, is, it looks like every other E39 5 Series you've ever seen. But this is actually a very special E39 5 Series. First off, if you know these cars, you'll notice the original M Sport wheels. And just take a look at it. It's in immaculate condition outside and in. But the thing that makes this one super special is right here it is a five speed manual transmission now you'll see a lot of 540i's with six speed manual transmissions and of course all the e39 m5's came with manual transmissions but i've never seen a 530 with the manual this is one of them and the only option it has is the m sport package which is the only option you want just look at this interior it's like a time capsule alex its prior owner kept this car immaculate this was his baby and you're gonna meet alex in the video the only option this car has on it is the m sport i mean this is a true enthusiast edition 530. let me just hold my enthusiasm for the car right here this is a video i'm actively working on. i'm gonna bring it to you guys very soon alex 
Uh, Alex, the owner of the 530, if you're watching this, I wanna thank you very much. Just the opportunity to spend a little bit of time with this car before it goes on to its new owner, it's been tremendous. Being able to drive time capsules like this, cars that are very much in vogue right now, uh, it's, it's just an incredible experience. So thank you guys, and make sure you guys don't miss the upcoming video on the 530 by subscribing to the channel. Now, if you like this sort of behind the scenes look at what's going on with the cars that I have, uh, what I showed you in this video is less than half the cars that I currently have. And of course, cars require maintenance. So there's a lot of that that goes on, but a lot of it doesn't make it to kind of the mainstream videos, we'll call it. But uh, if you wanna see more of it, I'll post more of it. Just let me know in the comment section and hit the like button, of course, if you like the video. And guys, I wanna thank each and every one of you for watching today. I'll catch you very soon. Oh,